Hello, my name is Tasa Yuvonen. I'm a principal program manager from the SharePoint Engineering. In this quick video, we will have a look on the different extensibility options which we have in SharePoint. So SharePoint has existed since 2001, and this video is getting recorded in 2019. So it's been a long lasting product, and there's quite a few different extensibility options which are available for SharePoint, depending on where are you deploying your extensibility or customizations, or where are you hosting with your SharePoint experience. Now, first of all, when we released the SharePoint back in 2001, we didn't actually have valid extensibility options. And, and really, it, the SharePoint itself wasn't super successful at the time. But then as part of the 2007 release of SharePoint, we actually introduced the first real extensibility model on SharePoint. You might actually argue if you've been around since 2003 or an older, even older version, you were able to actually extend those as well. But they were not really designed to be extended as such. So you you needed to override out-of-the-box files and override out-of-the-box experiences to make things happen. Now, with 2007 release, we introduced the farm solutions. And like I said, this video is getting recorded in 2019, so 12 years ago when the initial farm solution uh, capability was actually introduced. And the farm solutions uh, are right now still 100% supported in on-premises deployment. So you cannot actually build farm solutions and farm solution or use server-side APIs if you're looking into using uh, SharePoint Online or Office 365 or Microsoft 365 hosted services. So these are only supported in on-premises environments. Now, you also need to have a deep knowledge on SharePoint internals. So those XML structures, when you're building an Onnit XML files or feature XML files or element XML files, which are then defining the behavioral changes inside of the SharePoint or how you're deploying your assets and functionalities in the SharePoint. The all code has a full access on the farm data. And this is a really important thing to remember uh, with the farm solutions as well. And the, quite often this has been in the past actually kind of forgotten as well. So the code which is running in as a, as a farm solution code is full trusted code. It is running with the permissions of the farm. So it has access all of the data and all of the information and settings inside of the farm. And that, that is a really big consider tech, uh, security consideration, which people should be aware. So you definitely need to understand what kind of farm solutions you're deploying your data, and you need to trust those the providers or the developers who are actually implementing those farm solutions. And, and one of the key challenges around this one is that the farm solutions are actually quite complex to validate. And this actually meant uh, and, and still means that when you're deploying a farm solution, if you have an issue inside of the farm solution deployment, you might actually even take down the whole farm. So it, there's always a high risk when you're deploying your extensibility or the customizations using the farm solution options. But what's good about the farm solution still, if you think about the positive side of the farm solution, it is still supported in on-premises. So it is supported from 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, and 2019 versions. So absolutely supported extensibility option, but you cannot move that, that extensibility to the cloud. Now, the second option, uh, which we're going to go through today, is the sandbox solutions option. And this was introduced back in 2010 as a more flexible way of hosting extensibility. Actually, it kind of a roots itself from the thinking on Microsoft, where we wanted to come up with a model which it can actually host for our customers in a cloud. So you would be able to actually put your extensibility in cloud-hosted farm without the requirement of deploying the assemblies in the server side of the farm. And that's really the core of the Sandbox solution. So the code is running in a separate process if it was a code behind Sandbox solution. And then if it was a, a declarative Sandbox solution, and that was executed in a different process as well. So it was kind of a securely isolated from an extensibility point of view. Now, in the cloud, in SharePoint Online, uh, the SharePoint Solutions is only partially supported anymore. Uh, so you cannot actually deploy a code behind Sandbox Solutions. So only declarative Sandbox Solutions are supported in SharePoint Online. And that is actually there's potential performance issues which the Sandbox Solutions are uh, causing uh, from a code behind perspective and also with the declarative customizations, actually. This, uh, when you're installing a Sandbox Solution, well, it's kind of a classic way. It's, it's kind of a 
um, easy way if you come from a farm solution side to get assets deployed on a site level, but there's no installation APIs for those sandbox solutions in a site collection level. So the management and operations with sandbox solution gets quite difficult actually. You are able to override as an example, if you're, if you're running in a classic experience, you're able to override a classic master page, but do you actually want to do that? Because you probably want to go to the modern experiences. And what else are the capabilities which we are providing with Sandbox Solutions? Well, not that much actually in the cloud uh, experience. And Sandbox Solutions are not supported or the UI elements of the Sandbox Solutions are not really there in the modern experiences, the SharePoint. So this is not a future proven model. You should not be really investigating on using the Sandbox Solution model as the pattern for doing uh, extensibility and customizations uh, in the cloud or even in on-premises. Uh, even though technically absolutely supported since 2010, and even the code behind Sandbox Solutions are technically supported uh, in the newer versions of uh, SharePoint servers in on-premises side. Now, the third option, which we then introduced, was the SharePoint add-ons, and this was introduced in the, in, together with the Office add-ons model. And this was really targeted to be more cloud-driven, more a safe way of, of uh, customizing or extending the UI of the SharePoint in cloud or in on-premises. And the whole point was kind of decoupling the customization from SharePoint. So running the, the extensibility, the code outside of the SharePoint, uh, SharePoint uh, processes and outside of the SharePoint, even the SharePoint UIs. So if you think about sandbox solutions, you, you were uh, able to have that code behind assembly, but with Office uh, or add-in solutions and add-in implementation, you were always executing outside of the process of the SharePoint server and process of the SharePoint farm. Uh, you were either running in the browser as a SharePoint hosted add-in, or then you're running in an Azure hosted provider hosted add-in. Both of these are still valid options in the SharePoint online or in on-premises as well. Um, this definitely uh, was a, a great advantage uh, or a improvement for a sandbox solution. Uh, it provided a security model. So your add-ins were able to request the permissions uh, to a certain assets, and then that security model is always double check when something is getting executed. It, however, had a massive limitation. So the, the web part experience as an adding part was highly limited. So it was an isolated iframe. And this really came down on the fact that we wanted to have that high security and high security meant that iframe was the the only way we could actually provide that with uh, given the, the OAuth permissions. Um, it also required quite a significant additional and operational maintenance costs or investments even in on-premises. So you needed to need to have a additional domain in on-premises and then you need to um, maintain the, the, those provider hosted add-ins in on-premises if you're doing those separately. So there's quite a few considerations there uh, with adding model. And that's really the reason why the SharePoint adding model isn't really that widely used either. So sure, there was a high excitement when it was introduced and SharePoint hosted add-ins was a cool thing for a while, but it really has been slowing down and the concentration has been more on the provider hosted add-ins side, which is definitely more future proven. But either one of these are not really the ones where we are investing as a Microsoft anymore. Then kind of a, uh, not a separate model as such, but something which, which people started then using uh, together and as on top of the sandbox solutions or after the sandbox solutions and add in uh, by using the script embedding techniques. And this was something which was uh, demonstrated many MVPs and uh, the community resources were demonstrating how to make this happen as one of the options of, uh, let's say quotes, unbending the limitations of a UI extensibility. Uh, there was few different ways of doing this. So you were able to use a script editor web part or a content editor web part, or then you were able to use and still are able to use uh, user custom actions in a classic UI experience in SharePoint. So technically highly flexible, but then the problem and challenge here is the fact that this was actually a site collection owner driven capability. And you might see that that's a massive advantage, but, but it actually in, uh, opens up a massive security challenge, which is a high concern in the nowadays in the world. So people want to be much more aware that not a random end users can just embed a script on the site, which is accidentally then giving permissions, for example, all of the content in the, in the, in the, tenant or in the SharePoint uh, farm. So really the risk is there uh, because this model in, um, 
enables the site owners and site editors to embed any script on the site. And then the question is, what kind of scripts are getting executed and, and executed in the browser of which users? And that's really the key challenge around the script embedding in this massive, massive security uh, risk of enabling this happening uh, in the tenant or in the on-premises farm. So based on the fact that people are copy pasting stuff from internet and putting that then the script and sure, it might look like it's doing its job, but then is it doing something extra as well? And that's really the main concern. There was no centralized control and there is no centralized control in a tenant level for this. And script editing only works in a classic SharePoint experiences, not in the modern SharePoint experiences, because the modern SharePoint has been designed to be future proven and a safe way to extend SharePoint without uh, breaking the UI, without breaking the UI with the new versions and without uh, causing any security threats. And that's really actually interesting and dimension, which we didn't touch when we went through the farm solutions, sandbox solutions and add-ins. One of the key challenges we've been having on this journey from 2001, 2003, 2006, 2007, 2010 and so on, is the upgrades, the upgrades in on-premises, which is which quite often has been quite time consuming and quite, quite costly. So when you're upgrading the UI from 2007 to 2010 or 2010 to 2013, it actually was always a big project. And why is that? Well, it's because the UI was based on the model where we overwrite the UI. So we introduce a custom master page or we introduce a completely new custom UI experience rather than extending the existing model, uh, extending the existing UIs and existing master pages. And that's, really the core of the SharePoint framework. So the SharePoint framework comes and approaches the extensibility of SharePoint from learning from this past, learning from the previous versions and trying to address those gaps and mistakes uh, and issues that we were having based on the feedback from the enterprise customers and mid-size customers and the smaller customers as well. So SharePoint framework enables easily extend the SharePoint UI, but in a safe way. So in a way that you are adding a, a, a controlled script, which has been proven and centrally approved to be deployed in a tenant by your tenant administrator or the persons uh, behind responsible of that catalog. So the persons who are actually responsible of the farm. Uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot extend the SharePoint. It's just a matter of, again, creating the rules within a tenant level that in this tenant, we are able to either embed the scripts or not embed the script. And if we are allowed to put scripts on the sites, then you can have multiple people actually having the permissions to in install, for example, this uh, web parts or solutions to the app catalog. And really the key change here was that the fact that the customization or extensibility runs as part of the SharePoint page or as part of Microsoft Teams, which is a new thing uh, starting from the 1.8 version of SharePoint Framework. So the same piece of code can be either a SharePoint Framework web part or it can be actually a Microsoft Teams tab and it can be other things in the future as well. So the SharePoint Framework is really extending to be the factor model of extending the UI layer at the Office 365 scope, which is a good thing uh, for all of the developers. So you learn a one way to do extensibility and you can take advantage of the same model across the different services. Now, it has a, a really flexible web part experience, but it's not just web parts. It's also about the extensions, which are capable and available for you. So you're able to embed the footers and headers and other embedding scripts uh, techniques on the sites, but again, in a safe way with the tenant approval. You cannot embed these random scripts to the site without agreement in a tenant level who can actually do that. It runs under the permissions of the current user, so there's no auth model in here, but you are still able to elevate if needed by using a web API or using an external service which uh, your script is executing. It's also the industry standard development model. So basically, as long as if you learn how to do development using the SharePoint framework, you as a developer are able to do development against any other web client as well, or the modern web clients as well, because we're using Node.js, NPM, uh, TypeScript, like Angular team is using, and you're using React, Angular, Vue, whatever is your preference. So you're really up to date on the extensibility models uh, within the web. And this is really the future proven model which also the SharePoint engineering is using. 
So we built our own experiences using SharePoint Framework, which will give you the guarantee that we're not going to stop supporting uh, SharePoint Framework in future. And if you have a look on those uh, other four different options, which we went through, none of those uh, solution models were used by the SharePoint engineering in the past, the SharePoint Framework is. So the old models, we always used to have a separate way of actually extending SharePoint in the inside of SharePoint engineering, but now we are actually building the modern uh, SharePoint tenant admin UI, so the modern web parts or the modern experience is using the, exactly the same tooling as you have as a developer in your consumption when you're building an extensibility using SharePoint framework. Now, SharePoint Framework is also uh, supported in on-premises. Uh, so starting from SharePoint Framework 2016, feature pack two, you are able to use SharePoint Framework 1.1 version. And that means that uh, you are able to build modern web parts, but not extensibility, so not uh, headers and footers. So that's a really the limitation there because SharePoint Framework, SharePoint 2016 feature pack two does not support modern page experience. So therefore it's the classic experience over there and then you are kind of limited on the SharePoint Framework 1.1 version. And then on SharePoint uh, 2019, you are able to use uh, extensibility modern pages because 2019 actually supports modern pages. Uh, so you're able to actually use SharePoint Framework 1.4 version uh, over there. Now, those versions are actually kind of irrelevant. So whenever you start building your solution, uh, always install the latest version of SharePoint Yeoman Generator. And then as part of the questions in the Yeoman Generator, Yeoman Generator is asking which environment you want to target this solution to and always select that uh, properly. Uh, and it will give you the right version and right uh, package versions, which would be used within your deployment. Now, just a quick uh, recap on the offer options and impact farm solutions. We're not going to give it a green a smile. It is kind of a mid-sized smile as they are absolutely supported. Uh, you are still able to use them, but then you're limited in on-premises and you are not future proven. You're kind of a implementing in a, in a SharePoint specific way and uh, those customizations. Sandbox solutions, not good option. Definitely, you should not be looking at this option. And this includes also web templates and safe side as a template options because those are actually sandbox solutions. So please do not look on this option, try to walk away uh, from that side. The add-ins, yeah, quite okay. Uh, they are absolutely supported in on-premises and in cloud, but it's not really a future-proven model anymore. We are looking into investing more and more on SharePoint Framework and the other models, uh, well, SharePoint Framework models uh, in both sides. Script embedding, yeah, they're flexible, but they're actually quite evil. So you're able to accidentally embed a, a security risks uh, on your farm, even in on-premises, which might actually compromise your environment. And that's not a necessarily a good thing. So really right now, currently in spring, June, 2019, the right chosen model where we should be betting on is the SharePoint framework. This is the model which we are using in the SharePoint engineering for building the SharePoint experiences. And this is the model which you should be looking into when you are extending SharePoint, even in on-premises in SharePoint 2016 or SharePoint 2019 environments. That's a quick summary on the different options uh, and the recommendations from the SharePoint uh, engineering side. It is June 2019, so the situation definitely might change depending on when you're watching the video. But I wanted to walk through the different options and the, let's say the learnings from the options, which was hopefully useful for you. Thank you for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.